Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel and the flight briefing room. I haven't used the briefing room for a while, but I thought this video really needed to explain why I've kind of made it in two parts. The first part is me flying from the farm strip to Western Zoiland, and the second part was me returning from Western Zoiland, and there was quite a few learning points but I, of that second flight, and I didn't want to cut them out, so I'm going to keep that as a separate video. I had a really great time at Western Zoiland. The guys there were so hospitable. Even got a, even got a brew for my uh, my three pound landing fee. And Chris and Tim, it was great to meet you, and nice to see that you watched the videos as well. So anyway, let's leave the flight briefing room and get on the journey to Western Zoiland. My first land away. <music> Starts, uh, propeller comes removed, yes, vent is open, yes, pre prime fuel to the carb, I've done that already for flight, Tiggy fuel level is set, Tiggy is showing 11 litres, 11 litres is the maximum I can carry, and max fuel load today, helmet, check, instruments turned on and set, yes, and route set for today's journey to Western Zoiland, propeller is basically check, all clear around, no one's coming in, so it's ignition on, clear prop! Still looking out for eventualities in terms of uh, fields, so I'm now climbing out en route. So I've got my chart below me and I'm running the GPS at the same time. So I've got the Quantox Ridge just ahead of me at the moment, which I'm not sure if the camera can see that, but it's actually above me, so I need to keep climbing. I'm still only about 800 feet from takeoff, but climbing quite nicely. Trying to remember to back off the power, because it still climbs well in the cruise. Some of you may notice that my um, my GPS has changed. I've got this little area on top, and it's the UD5 Pro with the flam. Still doesn't meet the Mark One eyeball, but it's nice to know the technology is there to help. It's always interesting to read the comments that you put on there as uh, as viewers. And one guy said to me, he said, "If I let go of the bar, does basically the thing fall out of the sky?" Well, no. No, it doesn't. If it's slightly out of trim, which it is at the moment, it will turn. But you can pretty much fly it hands off. Because at trim, the bar will naturally adjust for it. Let's get back on track, Giles. Whee! The last time I flew over the Quantox was actually in a paramotor on the Icarus X. As you can see, there's big forested areas. And I had to kind of pick my route. Because if I had to land out, I didn't want to land in the middle of a forest. I think I picked that route last time, I went through there. It's an airfield where you need prior permission. It's all PPR, prior permission required. So I used their website, dialed in all my details. And I got a lovely phone call back from Neil. Thanks, Neil. And um, I said, yeah, no problem explained the joining procedure just to make sure I was happy, which is really nice. And just said, do a five mile call and do the overhead procedure. So, that's what I shall do. Still need to give a good look out. Today is one of those days where I think everybody's going to be out. about five miles out. It's definitely Bridgewater. And that's coming up on the M5. Zoilin Microbrace, Zoilin Microbrace. It's Golf Fox Trot 2, 2 flex ring inbound to you. Currently five miles from your position south of Bridgewater. I'm going to be joining from the south so I can come in and do an overhead join. If I came in from the north, I wouldn't be able to get down from 1500 feet, I'd have to turn over the circuit. So I'm going to do a, a southern approach. Uh, I've seen the runway now, got it, and that is Western Zoiland Field. 
So I need to get back up to 1500 feet. Western's Oiler don't actually have um, an active radio service in any way, shape or form. It's what's known as blind transmissions. So everybody in the circuit isn't being talked to by a controller. Everyone just transmits where they are in the position so everybody else can understand where they are. Zoiler Microbase from Golf Fox Trot 2 to Flexwing and Eurovode 1500 feet of 1012 joining for right hand 3 3. I need to now get down to 800 feet, I need to lose 700 feet. Still looking up for anyone joining, they're coming in from the north side. This machine really, really does not want to come down and I do not want to have an engine out in any of that stuff. If I have an engine out here, I'm going down there. I'm not going over that stuff. Oh, 800 feet, cool, that worked. Paralleling the runway. Zoil of micro base from Golf Foxtrot 2 to downwind runway 2-3 right hand. I feel really slow in this circuit. <laughs> I'll start thinking about my descent because I'm still at 800 feet. Anyone joining on final? Can't see anyone high or low. Cold Foxtrot 2 2, final runway 3 3. Right, Jars, forward. Fluid flyby and wings level. Fire is fully in and I cannot get down. Right, should be able to get in from here. No brakes. Right. Temps are cooling. Okay. That's my switch. Oh. As you've probably seen in the video, it was a lovely day to go flying. And for my first land away, first kind of flight away from the field for some distance, the circuit Western Zoiling is fairly non-standard. I'll put an overlay on the screen just to show you briefly because there's a lot of noise sensitive areas and I didn't want to screw up on my first time going to somebody else's field in the circuit. Joining the circuit at Western Zoiland, I did feel a little bit slow, but even with the bar fully in, I did the PB just did not want to come down. I had to S-turn quite a lot on final approach to actually get myself in a position where I knew I was going to end up on the runway. Had a great time with the guys there and in part two, it got a little bit more thermic in the afternoon and I certainly felt the rock and roll in the, uh, in the PB on the way back. But again, that's all for part two. So until next time, everybody, fly safe. Thank you.